In the previous video, we had a look at use state hook with TypeScript. We initialized use state with a simple Boolean value and allowed TypeScript to infer the types for the state variable as well as the setter function. In this video, let's take a look at typing the use state hook when the initial value is only known at a future point in time. For this example, I have created another file inside the state folder. The file name is user.tsx. Let me go over this user component code. In the JSX, we have two buttons, login and log out, whose handlers are to be defined once again. We also have div tags, which are supposed to render the logged in user's name and email address. Above the component, I have defined the type of the logged in user. It is an object with name and email as properties. Within the component, I have also invoked the use state hook. User is the state variable and set user is the setter function. Let us now finish this component and understand how to make it work with TypeScript. When a user visits our website, they are not logged in by default. When that is the case, a very common thing to do is initialize use state with null. Let's do the same. We should also set the user state to null when the user logs out. So in the handle log out function, we call set user passing in null. So far, so good. Let's now define the login handler. When the user clicks on the login button, we want to set the name and email properties. Of course, those values would be provided by the user, but for our example, let's hard code it. So within handle login, we're gonna call set user and we pass in an object. The object will contain name set to Vishwas and email set to Vishwas at example.com. But as soon as we do that, TypeScript is going to complain. Argument of type name colon string email colon string is not assignable to parameter of type set state action of null. So what has happened here is that TypeScript has inferred the type of user to be null because of the initial value that we have specified. So now when we try to assign a user object of type auth user, TypeScript is not happy. It is telling us, hey, you told me that the user is of type null so I cannot let you pass in a non-null value to the setter function. So we need a way to pacify TypeScript. And this is where we have to explicitly specify the type for the use state hook and not rely on type inference. We specify the state type by including angle brackets after the use state keyword. So use state, less than sign and greater than sign. Within this angle bracket, we specify null. But this pretty much is the same as type inference. However, we can also now tell TypeScript, hey, the type of user can be null or auth user. And just like that, TypeScript is happy once again. To repeat what I just said, we are informing TypeScript that user can either be null or auth user. The initial value is null, but in the future, its value can be of type auth user. With our type in place, we can now bind the username and email. So curly braces, and when I type in user dot, we get autocomplete for name. When I select it though, you can see that we have the optional chaining operator. And this is because user can be null. 
So only if user exists, access the name property. That is some TypeScript magic. Also, if you try to get rid of this optional chaining, TypeScript is going to complain again. Object is possibly null. So you always have to check if the object exists before accessing its property. Same is the case with email. Curly braces, user.email. Our user component is now complete. So this is pretty much how you type the use state hook whose value can be a different type compared to the initial value. Specify angle brackets and mention the type of the initial value as well as the future value. In our case, it is either auth user or null. Now this is a very common pattern, so make sure you have a good understanding of what we have done in this video. Thank you all for watching, and if you're enjoying the content, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.